that science going on up in the skies. Although, to be honest, looking around me right now, you'd never believe there was a massive cloud of volcanic ash up there. But for the past few days, Ayavalaukud has been spewing out at least three billion kilos of the stuff, and it's about six kilometers above me, right where commercial airplanes like to fly. Now, around the world, every single year, at least 60 volcanoes erupt, but you don't hear about planes being grounded on this scale very often, do you? So what is it about this ash that's causing such a problem? One of the reasons stems from the nature of the eruption of Ayavalaukud itself. It's of a special type called a phreatomagmatic eruption. Now, Ayavalaukud has a special feature at the top of it. This cup shape here called a caldera. Now, in this caldera is an ice cap, basically frozen water. And the phreomagmatic eruption occurs because the hot magma, hot molten rock full of gas bubble, surges up and hits this ice. Now, when the magma and ice meet, a massive thermal contraction of the magma occurs because it's been cooled really rapidly by the melting ice. So the magma contracts and hardens in just a few seconds, and the shock waves that course through it cause the magma to shatter into really fine ash that looks like this. Not only is it finer than most volcanic ash and therefore tends to rise higher and travel further, but it's also much more abrasive. But the big question is, how long is this going to last? Well, like all things, there's some bad news and some good news. The bad news is the last big eruption from this volcano lasted from 1821 to 1823, two years. It just doesn't bear thinking about. But the good news is the abrasive ash may be a short-lived feature of the eruption, as it relies on hot magma reacting with water. Once the ice cap has melted, far less ash will form. This type of volcanic ash has a high silica content, which is really bad news for jet engines. And I'm going to leave it to Jem to explain. A jet engine is not only an incredible piece of kit that can get you halfway around the world in a day, it's also simple enough to be described by the phrase suck, squeeze, bang, blow, in that it sucks in air at the front here, squeezes it and adds fuel for a big explosion in the middle, which then drives hot gas out of the back, shifting the whole thing that way. As it does that, here's the clever bit, as the hot gases come out the back, they spin this little turbine here, which in turn spins this compressor, sucking in more air, keeping the whole thing going. But to keep a continuous explosion like that going requires a massive amount of fresh air. I'll show you what I mean. As you can see, even a tiny jet engine like this sucks in a vast amount of air to keep it going. That's just to produce 10 kilos of thrust. A commercial jet engine is more like 24 tonnes of thrust. It could suck all the air out of your house in less than a second. And you can easily imagine, if that air's full of dust, there's a lot of unwanted stuff hitting some very precise components. Precise components that are extremely hot. So how do these fine particles of volcanic dust bring an aircraft to its knees? Well, they clog important sensors, they uh, prevent the pneumatics from working particularly well, but they also have a very interesting and detrimental effect on the turbine blades. I'll show you what I mean. I'll fire this up. Now, this is the uh, explosion that's going on inside the jet engine the entire time. I'll give that a bit more oxygen. This is like the combustion chamber where there's a huge roaring furnace. And then this is the turbine at the back. Now, the hottest part of a jet engine gets to about 1,500 degrees. Volcanic dust melts at around 1,000 degrees. Now, what happens is that dust that's like powdered glass drops into the combustion chamber, gets turned to molten glass, and then goes straight onto the turbine blades, giving a layer of molten glass on the blades. Now, these turbine blades are made to within a hair's width accuracy. You put a layer of thin glass on them, they no longer do the job they're supposed to do. I'm going to put this mask on now because volcanic dust is not good for my inside. Right. 
Now this is the gust going into the jet engine. Starts melting and then the glass starts to form in a layer on the turbine blade. Which means the blade is no longer operating efficiently and the engine starts dropping down. As luck would have it, there is a way out of this situation, but it requires nerves of steel. The pilot has to actually shut the engine down, then glide down through cold air. Right, now there's a layer of glass on there. I'll show you what happens now. You shut the engine off, and you start putting cold air whistling through it. Look, you can see here, as the cold air is hitting the turbine blade, it's shrinking ever so slightly and it's enough to shatter the... There goes another piece. So the glass is shattering off the blade as we can see it here. This has actually happened. In 1982, a British Airways jet lost all four engines flying through volcanic dust over Indonesia. And they found this out by accident. The engines cut out, the thing fell out the sky, gliding down, then suddenly it was able to restart its engines. And it's because of this effect. you wouldn't want to rely on it. For more information on this story, check out our website, slash bang, and follow the links to the Open University for our interactive challenge. 